But once we look at the detail here, it's much more overwhelming compared with osmosis here. So. So there's an investment review for the multi-chain token called multi. Since Iniswap, they're gonna rebrand their product name into also they're gonna change the token code to multi. But I also have a couple of key updates for their project. So let's review it, okay? Then this is my portfolio strategy. So I only recommend assets at Bitcoin and all the Oracle fits related to these seven categories. And if you want to deepen your understanding about my portfolio strategy, please check out my other video about my portfolio strategy. And here's my video link, okay? Then today's multi-chain matching category is here. Number four, DEX, and since they're gonna provide a cross-chain bleach, so number seven, blockchain interoperability is another matching category too, okay? Then as usual, I'm gonna apply the six Anaka points to start from the pain points, product, team, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. And for each, I set the 5.0 point here, so the total score is 30.30. If you want to deepen your understanding about my, how I'm going to analyze each point here, please check out my other video about my R-Point investment strategy. And here's my video link, okay? So, this is a total score update about the multi-chain multi. So, November 2021, total score is 27.0 point. This time, February 2022, 27.0 point. But I have a key update for all these points here, pain points, products, execution power, token economy, and hype cycle. Okay, so from here, let's review it, right? Then number one, pain point analysis. So here's key updates, mainly two points. The first one, this one. First of all, DeFi is a killer solution in blockchain space, as we know. So TVL finally hits 265 million as of January 2022. Starting from 2020, DeFi market rapid growth, like this way, simply say it's amazing, right? Then once you look at the success of DeFi, we have experiences multiple innovation here. Starting with decentralized stable coin, or DEX, decentralized lending, decentralized mutual fund, decentralized insurance. Okay? In this case, about multi-chain, related to topic is here, DEX. So once you look at the success of you know these Uniswap, SushiSwap, Cloud Finance, it's great innovations. You know, we're gonna achieve no leasing control model, also you know, LP incentive staff with the liquidity mining. It's a huge innovations. But recently, we're gonna identify new issue here on DeFi 1.0 project on DEX space. Then usually, we're gonna call those project, they're gonna try to solve the problem on a DeFi 1.0 is DeFi 2.0. Of course, Cross Chain Next is one of the major project on a DeFi 2.0, okay? So here's a pain point on DeFi 2.0 related to DEX project. This one, higher gas fee on Ethereum accelerates cross-chain transaction demand on the ETH farming market, right? So first of all, once you look at the ETH farming market as of January 2022, it's huge success, starting from the Convex Finance and Yam Finance. Their TV already hit over billions. It's an amazing success. But one of the critical issues currently ETH farming facing right now is this one, DAPS congestion on the Ethereum platform. So this data from 2019, but we can have many things from here. The orange mark here is a pure market capitalization for each past project, right? The blue mark here is an aggregated market gap of the older application running on each past project. As you can see here, that's congestion happening here on the Ethereum platform. Then because of this, what we are facing right now is this one. Ethereum gas fee problem, right? So since December 2020, Ethereum platform transformed their consensus algorithm from proof of work based one like Bitcoin to prove state based one. The major purpose of this transformation is to decrease the gas fee on the Ethereum platform. But still, Ethereum gas fee is increasing like this way, much higher than Bitcoin these days. Then to solve this issue, most of the DEX players these days, they're gonna take a multi-chain approach. So Uniswap, SushiSwap, Cloud Finance, all these players starting their DEX business from Ethereum, as we know. But these days, they're gonna expand into other chains, such as Binance Smart Chain, or other L2 projects such as AVAX, Polygon, Phantom, those kind of things. Of course, the major purpose to take in multi-chain to decrease the gas fee. 
because you know, this alternative blockchain is much cheaper gas fee compared with Ethereum platform. That's why they're going to take multi-chain approach. But here's a big issue for the you know, current tech system. The liquidity pool on each chain here is isolated each other. So they cannot share. It's separated. That is why even from employer, these days, they're going to try to take the cross-chain bleach transactions to maximize the business opportunity in this multi-chain environment. Good example is this one. WBTC boat run by Young Finance. So for example, like a butcher want to maximize APY of WC boat. That is why they got all the time looking for the cheaper gas fee transactions. So for example, like they want to cross chain bleach liquidity such as DAI on a BSC and a USDC on ABEX. Running you know, this cross chain bleach model, they can minimize the, the transaction fee, then they can maximize the revenue which means they can achieve this higher APY for their customer. That is why the market demand on the cross-chain bleach is rapidly increasing these days, okay? Then here's another pain point on the cross-chain bleach solutions. It's like the blockchain metaverse. So multi-chain NFT requires cheaper cross-chain bleach solutions. First of all, as we know, currently metaverse is a pretty big market trend. But here's a critical difference between centralized metaverse and a decentralized metaverse. So centralized metaverse, like you know, Facebook and Amazon, they gotta control everything. Okay? But blockchain metaverse, no centralized player here, fully decentralized one. Okay, what kind of critical issue we're gonna facing with this centralized you know, metaverse model here is this one. Privacy control issue. Of course, Facebook, Google, they gotta make a huge amount of money for advertising business, as we know. So, the, of course, you know, metaverse, they gotta make money with advertising, right? So, to achieve that goal, they want to control all privacy information on the metaverse. So, it's kind of a serious threat for every single, our daily life. So, to avoid this issue, we have to realize these the metaverse by using public blockchain network, okay? But here's the big issue on public blockchain network. Again, gas fee problem. To realize who is sustainable and scalable metaverse economy, we need a cheaper gas fee transaction fee on the bus market, especially Ethereum platform. The, one of the major alternative solutions these days to solve the gas fee issue on NFT transactions is layer two solutions. So Ronnie is a good example. So the reason why Sky Marvis, the creator of the Axie Infinity, started the Ronnie L2 solution because of the Ethereum gas fee. With the huge success of the Axie Infinity here, NFT transaction cost on the Ethereum platform for Axie Infinity is getting higher and higher. Then thinking about much more scalability with the solutions, also in our gamification model to acquire a massive active user base or maintain those active user base, they have to maintain cheaper gas fee transactions on their platform. That is why they decided to build the layer two solutions by themselves, running their public blockchain with the DPS model. Also, they have an EVM here. So they're going to continuously run the Axie Infinity applications on top of their running network here. But because of this, next thing is happening here about NFT cross chain bleach transactions. So once you look at this data here, January 2022, starting from 2021, Cross-chain bleach NFT transaction is rapidly increasing these days. It's actually pretty much the same timing as with the huge hits of the RC Infinity as NFT game here. Then currently, you know, January 2026, total volume of the cross-chain bleach on NFT transactions hit 16 billion, rapidly increasing these days. Because you know, once you look at the market success of NFT, as you can see here, it's amazing success. So for example, on November 14, 2020, total daily sales volume on NFT was 141K. But almost exactly one year later, November 14, 2021, total daily sales volume size is 133 million, 943X within just one year. That is why another critical mission for the cross-chain bleach is to realize much cheaper and much scalable cross-chain bleach solution for NFT transactions. So DeFi and NFT, those are the pretty major target for the cross-chain bleach solutions. So from that perspective, we have to analyze multi-chain project, okay? Then next one, product analysis. Think about the once we analyze present 
cross chain bridge market, they mainly have two technical approach. Multi-chain approach or osmosis approach. Okay, then this one is multi-chain model. Then I call it meat and bar model. Then once we're gonna take the use case for yield farming and NFT marketplace, for example, and then yield farming case, for example, Yang Finance wants to sell USDC on a Phantom and wants to buy BUSD on Binance Smart Chain. Arbitrage transaction on a stable coin market. It's very popular use case on the yield farming products. So in this case, multi-chain meat wrapped asset of telling USDT contract here. The Binance Smart Chain side also they're gonna meet wrapped assets for buying BUSD tokens. Then once they're gonna complete these transactions, they're gonna burn these wrapped asset contract. Okay? Then we're gonna complete the transactions. Then about for NFT marketplace, it's pretty much the same. Some users they want to sell the NFT on the root project on the Ethereum platform. Then the other user they want to buy on the root NFT, but he wants to use Arbitrum here because gas fee is much cheaper on Arbitrum as LT solutions. So in this case, multi-chain support to meet this you know selling NFT contract with the wrapped assets. Then also they're gonna meet this you know buy NFT contract on the root project with the wrapped assets. Then once they're gonna complete these transactions, they're gonna buy this contract. Alright? So it's pretty much a simple model. Then you know they're gonna run these cross chain bridge transaction on their own chain, multi chain on bridge chain. Okay. Then one key things, the one key things I want to avoid misunderstanding about this you know infrastructure here, liquidity mining program on these cross chain bridge solutions. Since multi chain also can take some transaction fee on this cross chain bridge, so they can take like this way. You know, multi can share their revenue, these you know, cross chain bridge transaction fee to multi holder or round buyback program. So just like you know, Uniswap AMM model, they can also provide some kind of incentive program for the retail investor who gonna stake these multi chain tokens. Okay, that's the key things I want you to understand here. Then here's another approach, osmosis approach. It's usually we say AMM with liquidity pool model. So in this model, Osmosis here and a two chain here, Cosmos and also Luna. Both connected to ICB protocol on the Cosmos network. Then they're gonna build the each liquidity pool based on the each chain. In this case, Atom token on the Cosmos network. This liquidity pool. On the Luna chain, these are the major liquidity pool on the assets. Luna liquidity pool, USD liquidity pool, and Amber liquidity pool, for example. Then they're gonna using this MM liquidity pool here, then they're gonna run cross chain bridge transactions. So in this case, Osmos itself doesn't have own chain. This is a critical difference compared with multi-chain model. Just they're gonna share the liquidity each other on each chain, then they're gonna swap these transactions. Then in this case, of course, just like the Uniswap model, liquidity provider can gain liquidity mining reward as same as Uniswap. Okay. Then, based on this, you know, understanding, we're gonna move to value calculation analysis. It has multi and osmosis. The thing about the similar typical approach, all bridge is a multi-chain direct competitor. Then, these osmosis synapse seller, they're gonna take the AMM model, like Uniswap model, but both players are focused on cross bridge solutions. They are competing each other. Okay. Then thinking about you know potential of the multi chain, first things we want to pay attention to this one, fast move advantage. Multi chain is a fast mover in this market. That's why only multi chain can take fast move advantage of this market. Okay. Then the other things I also want to pay attention to this red market right here. So as I told you in the previous slide, multi chain they're gonna take mint and bar model. Then osmosis they're gonna take. MM liquidity mining model. Then because of this, you know, different technical approach here, they're gonna facing these issue when they're gonna scale up their solutions. Non-free page with impermanent loss risk and NFT bridge. Then to help you understand this point, I'm gonna compare these two player, more time osmosis, about these three topics. Okay? Then let's start from free page. So 
the pretty good reference for us is the Uniswap model because you know, osmosis also take Uniswap AMA model from the price decision mechanism. Okay? The key point here is that multi-chain technical approach, they're not going to face this three-page risk. This risk only does it exist on AMA model like osmosis. Right? And to help you understand this you know, Uniswap price decision mechanism, it's kind of a better way for you to see from you know, order book model here on a central exchange. This is from Binance. So in a central exchange such as Binance, they're going to aggregate all the market order into single price board here. Market order, limit order, any kind of order, they're going to aggregate it. Then they're going to match this order on a single board. We call it order book model. But in a Uniswap on a decentralized exchange, it's pretty much different. Usually we call a pool balance system to decide a price on each crypto asset pair. So in this case, ETH and DAI pair, all right? Then, you know, Uniswap, ETH, DAI pair pool, each asset have their own pool. ETH pool, 10K ETH, DAI pool, 1 million DAI. With this in a pool balance model, they're gonna fix their price. One is equal 100 die. With this in pool balance here. Then why are we gonna see three page risk on this pool balance mechanism here? Because first of all, in this deck system, only accept market order, not limit order, market order only. Then once you're gonna put some you know, order here, let's say selling die and buying is here, your order itself has price impact on this price decision mechanism here. Because of your order, you can experience some stupid risk, which means that you cannot take your present price for your order. In this case, you have to accept a little higher price compared with your market order when you make the order on this pre balance mechanism, which we call stupid risk. Then this risk doesn't exist only on AMA model. Osmosis, Stellar Network, Synapse Network, all these three players, they're going to take the AMA model here, so they have to deal with this risk here. But for the multi-chain, no risk here. That's the key thing I want you to understand here. Okay? Then the other risk is you know, this one, impermanent growth risk for the liquidity mining program. So this is also related to the price decision mechanism on the Uniswap. Then Osmosis, Serial Network, Synapse Network also face this risk too. Then for the multi-chain, no risk because they don't provide liquidity mining program. Okay? Then this is a quotation from the white paper from Uniswap. Then let's take an example about the East type here. Then in this case, once 1.25x price change is gonna happen between East type here, here liquidity miner, the kind of experience is additionally. 0.6 loss relative to just holding ETH and DAI tokens. Then once 5x price change is going to happen between ETH and DAI pair here, result in a 25.5% additional loss just relative to holding those crypto assets in you know, ETH and DAI. The most critical points, what I want you to understand here is this one. This risk does exist both directions, bull or bear market. So in this case, for example, like, you know, blue market side, I think, you know, you're not going to so complain about this point because, you know, even you're going to take this additional loss here, still you can make money, right? But bear market side, it's going to be a serious problem because, you know, not only about you're going to losing five years loss on an ESA asset, but at the same time, you have to additionally own these risk here, 25.5% loss. So because of this, you know, impermanent loss risk model, actually, you know, those stable coin pair, like, you know, DAI and USDT pair, those are pretty much popular on yield farming market. Okay? This is also the key things, what I want you to understand here. Okay? The third one, NFT cross chain pledge. This is also pretty important. So the answer is pretty much simple. Uh, to apply MA model for NFT cross chain based transactions is technically impossible. Why? Because NFT stands for one crypto asset. That's it. Good example is this one. Board Ape number 5269. Just one. Just one exists in this you know, entire blockchain market. So we cannot build liquidity pool 
to run these constant rates transactions. You see this point here? That's why think about you know long-term market potential on the crossing bridge market. What are we looking for is crossing bridge solutions who can have our both DeFi crossing bridge, also NFT crossing bridge. So from this perspective, fast mover, multi-chain is a perfect technology can cover both crossing bridge transactions, DeFi and NFT. That's a key thing someone should understand here. Okay. Number three, team analysis. There is no big update here, but the key thing someone wants to understand here is Andy Cron J, he's also a technical read on multi-chain project. It's a great advantage for them. And also, their team is growing up, plus 30 member in a global basis, and then they're gonna register their entity in Singapore and also closed you know 60 million financing round with 1.5 million USD variation read by Binance Lab in December 2021. It's amazing. Then number four, execution plan analysis. Here's you know KPI stats comparisons. All major crossing bridge player as of February 2022. Multi-chain, previously any swap, fast mover. Look at here. Amazing traction here. Number of node 33, number of supporting chain 30, it's also the biggest one here. TVL hit over 10 billions. Then 24 hour volume size also hit the over 1 billion. Multi chain hit the almost 10 times bigger than Osmosis here. So, literally, multi chain is the number one player. Then, why Osmosis? They're gonna have this, you know, pretty big number here on the node here because they can use Cosmos by data network. Currently, their number is 118. That's why. Okay? Then, a little things, especially what I want to compare between multi-chain and osmosis is this one, supporting chain. Multi-chain number is bigger than osmosis, you know, 30 to 18. But once we look at the detail here, it's much more overwhelming compared with osmosis here. So, osmosis, these are the supporting chain. Once we look at the here, major one is Cosmos, Luna, and Crypto.com. Other chain, as you can see here, pretty much minor one. Look at the multi-chain. Ethereum, Phantom, Lunar, Harmony, AVAX, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, all player, it's a major chain. That's huge difference here. But why, you know, this kind of difference here, they're gonna happen between Osmosis, multi-chain? Because in you know, Osmosis, those, you know, cross-chain bleach transactions, they're gonna cover on the Cosmos network, they have to apply ICD protocol to connect Cosmos network. But once we're gonna look at the you know, history of the cross-chain bleach market, it's gonna kind of study from L1 to L2 bleach, Ethereum to AVAX, Ethereum to Arbitrum, Ethereum to Polygon, Ethereum to Phantom. That's why most of the you know, chain here, they don't have any plan to support ICD protocol. So once you look at the liquidity pair on osmosis, it's pretty much clear. Almost over 50% the liquidity TVL covered by Atom Osmo and USD Osmo here, as you can see. Over 500 million. Over 50% of the TVL. That's why think about the future market potential, especially you know, competition with you know, multi-chain and osmosis. To me, Multi-chain completely overwhelmed osmosis as of now. That's the key thing someone to understand here. Okay. Then number five, token economy analysis. So here's the token economy design matrix which I made. They measure matching category of the multi-chain here. Number one, DEX, also blockchain interoperability. Okay. Then these are the network effect model on the multi-chain. So starting from this one, EU farming and NFT game five wants a cheaper cross-chain bleach. So they're gonna lock their crypto assets into multi-chain. Then, then they're gonna achieve more liquidity, so more transactions, better customer experiences. These are the bring more liquidity pool on their growth, cross-chain bleach. Then by leveraging this in blue line here, second one is this one, DAO plus asset growth. Especially what I pay attention to is this area here. So multi-staking reward by revenue share program also run by program. That's my expectation to them. 
then they can achieve less multi supply for the exchange, so less selling pressure on the multi token, so they can achieve better customer experience here. I think this network effect model will be the one of the ideal one for the multi tokens. Okay. Then, next one benchmark analysis as of February 2022. Multi market cap is currently 465 million. Osmosis, 2.5 million. Think about those are huge market difference here. We'll simply say, multi token is hugely undervalued because their traction level is almost 10 times bigger than Osmosis. Then, also think about the long term potential of the multi chain. Also, we need to pay attention to these two major blockchain interoperability projects, Cosmos and Prokadot. Cosmos market cap is 10 billion. Prokadot market cap is 40 billion. I do think multi-chain will catch up this market cap level in long term. That's what I'm thinking about. Okay? Then, about governance now, it's pretty much up to one. Then, this one, number six, half cycle analysis. Then here is Gartner half cycle analysis, blockchain technology 2021 versions, and a major matching category for the multi chain. It's starting from decentralized exchange, blockchain interoperability, DeFi, decentralized web, and NFT. Then one of the critical differences compared to Osmosis or Serial Network or Synapse is decentralized web and NFT. Because you know, those players, they're gonna take AMA model for the question bridge transactions. They cannot support NFT transactions. That's why they gotta follow up these you know, decentralized web market momentum, especially if it's related to this one, metaverse. Since you know, multi-chain is kind of only player can gain strong market momentum on metaverse here because they can cover cross chain bleach transaction for NFT. That's why. Okay. The last item, total swap dates. No squat change, 27.0 point here. So my minimum investment criteria is over 25 points. So from this perspective, I'm gonna to continue to recommend investment in multi-chain token, multi. Especially think about the gap of the market cap compared with the osmosis. I think multi-token, simply say it's pretty cheap right now. To me, it's pretty much worth to invest as of now. That's what I'm thinking about, okay? Then also, if you got any kind of questions with this video, please think about to join my premium membership program live Q&A sessions. Then every week, I'm going to have a live Q&A session with my member. Then there, I can answer you any kind of questions related to this video or any other video that I make. Then of course, I know you're busy. So you can post your question in advance. Then during the live Q&A sessions, I can answer your questions. Then later, you can check out my recorded video. All right? Then for more detail, please check out my other video. And here's my video link. Okay? All right, so that is all this time. So I'm gonna make this video for the educational purpose. So I'm not gonna guarantee you any kind of sustainable investment outcome with this video and this video that I make. But I truly hope that my video will probably help you guys understand about high potential about crypto and blockchain space. So I'm gonna make a lot of in this video of crypto and blockchain space. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye.